there are many ways to approach street photography. In this video I talked about these three methods and in this video I'm gonna talk about these three methods. Hi it's Peter here and let's get right into the business. The first one is the candid approach. As a street photographer you probably know that everything when you do street photography is kind of candid. You, you're supposed to be invisible and you're not interfering with what's happening on the streets. But being candid is not always the only case. You might take some street portraits, you might take some uh, action shots on the streets and you might take some cityscapes which is a bit related to street photography even though it's a bit different thing. But then there is the approach to be totally candid and that requires a few things. First of all you need to blend in with the rest of the people in the street. And if you're traveling and the clothes are a bit different you might want to kind of blend in with having similar type of clothes. If you stand out from the crowd you won't be invisible. If you want to do candid stuff then that's not good. And also a small camera that does not scream photography and a photographer and expensive gear is also something to have. And what I've done is that I usually wear black as you probably noticed and the, the simple reason is that I don't be a reflective thing in any if, if there is a reflective thing I won't be the one in the in the shot. Of course this is a bit of a problem of course but you know having a hat on could take care of that. And then also the camera. What I've done is blacked out all the white text in the front because I think cameras should be black so that they are not so visible to other people in the streets. When you're having you know black clothes, black camera, you, you're not screaming expensive gear and that could be something also. And also to be invisible is a lot easier. Well the candid stuff can be done in in many other methods too. You might be just want to stand in the street corner minding your own business, maybe even looking at your phone doing something and and just quickly grab a shot. Or you could actually do is just to have your camera you know hanging from your neck and then use your phone as your viewfinder and then make the shots from there. People won't even notice. And you put the camera on silent mode, they won't even hear you taking the images. That's one approach. I'm not really a big fan of that because even though you want to be invisible, you don't want to be uh, stalking in a way that you want to be, uh, well it's really hard to explain. You want to be invisible and visible at the same time. So you're not kind of like stalking or any kind of peeping tom type thing that you're taking with the big big lens and stuff. So you want to kind of blend in. But the, the, the thing is that usually people don't even realize that you're taking photos and in many many places they don't even care. That of course depends on a little bit of the culture. But you know it's it's, it's hard to, to explain what, what the candid really means uh, compared to being out there totally open. They kind of you need to kind of blend uh, uh, blend in that's what I said many times but kind of be visible and invisible at the same time. It's, it's just a, a skill to master and the master of street photographers are great on that and that's something if, if you want to do you might want to learn and see how that goes. And then we have the theme based approach. You might have a theme that you photograph and that's a good thing to have a theme anyways because then if you're in a creative rut you always have something to photograph. What I've done is that I have folders for each subject and then when I have a photograph for that I'll just move it to that particular folder and that will build up my approach to street photography which is in many cases theme based like I talked about in that video that I have this theme that is all the big umbrella is traces of human and then 100 different subjects under that. That gives me always ideas what to photograph. So I have 100 ideas in my head and I always have something to photograph if I don't you know feel that creative on a, on a certain day. Just start with one subject that you see and or theme and then go to that towards that and rest will follow and that's I think that's a good method. It works for me. I don't know what are your methods when you have a creative rut. This is not the topic of this video but it's interesting to hear because you need to have that creative boost when you're doing street photography because there's lots to photograph on the streets but if you are in a creative rut you don't see anything and that's 
why a, a theme or a subject is good to have because you always have something to start with. I don't know if that made any sense, but having a list of things that you want to photograph and add to those every time you go out if you don't know what to photograph is a good idea. Let me see if I have anything else on this. Yeah, and, and if you want to see part of those things is that I've made some short photo stories and I do have a playlist of short videos, really short videos about those images and that I have photographed and I put them under different themes and made some stories. And you probably guessed that the next one, the third one is storytelling, if you didn't see the list in the, at the beginning of this video. And what always, when I talk about storytelling, I have to remind you of our workshop with Matti Solanto here in Helsinki next August. It's all about storytelling. On this video I'm talking about storytelling with one image. That storytelling uh, workshop is all about creating a story with several images. And those YouTube shorts that I've made are part of uh, that not part of the workshop, but part of that making uh, stories with several images. And I think those might give you some idea what it is. And here is a video about the workshop. And if you're interested, sign up by the April 15th. Telling stories with a photograph is not easy. And what is actually a photo stories or telling stories with a photograph? And here is an example. It's easier to talk about through images. Here is an example. I saw this in Lisbon. There was a, this car with the bonnet open. Probably something was wrong with the car. And I took this image. Really don't know why I took it because there's no story in this. This is, you know, nothing this image actually. I was there waiting for a little while. Actually what I was waiting for is the owner of the car come to the scene to see what, what's happening. If maybe I could talk and take some photos. But then this girl approached the guy in the back. I know that this girl has nothing to do with the car. But if I did not tell you this, then you would think that there is a story that this girl has his car, uh, her car broken and goes out and asks the guy for help. What we see from the body language, the girl is leaning a little bit towards the guy and asks, can you help me? And then the guy is a bit hesitating and, and you know, doesn't want to look straight in the eye because he doesn't want to say no. And then we don't know how the story goes. Images that ask more questions than give answers are good photographs for storytelling. Quote is something that I think we all should think about if we want to make images that has stories. And another good thing or important thing to have in an image that tells stories is that it should raise some emotions in you. You will feel emotionally about something, about the character, about the people, about the scene, or whatever. And it can be something that you have felt yourself and that kind of resonates with that feeling. It raises some emotions in you. And I think that's also a very important thing about storytelling. And I will have a separate video about storytelling here in the near future to, to give more examples. But this simple example also tells that the story doesn't have to be the biggest in the world. It can be a small story that you in your imagination carries on to something. You, might, you can have a different story than I did on this image. Sometimes you won't even see a story that someone else does. And the beauty of photography is that we interpret photographs different ways. The story doesn't have to be the same for me or for you. And that's, I think, the main thing. And there is not a wrong story because we all have different backgrounds, different uh, uh, ideas of life. We've lived a different life, so we have different experiences. And that's why our stories are different when we see an image. If it's the same as the photographer intended, then fine, that's okay, it's, it's nice, but it's not, it's equally nice. It doesn't have to be the same. I hope that these uh, approaches and things help you to achieve better photographs. And don't forget about the 52 assignments that I have. And here is the black and white assignment or theme for March 2023 it is. And there's also the ideas what I think or what I had in mind when I made the assignment for that theme. You want to watch that if you're interested in the 52 assignments. So what do you think about street photography? How much do you do street photography? And be sure to watch the previous part of this. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.